There is only one of you, only one of me. Happy Pride! From the Truly Remarkable Life Unicorns. That's right. <laughs> I'm here today revealing who we really are. Our real nature. We're, we're you know. <laughs> I'm KJ. I'm Craig. And we're Truly Remarkable Life. There's a million of those who won't let us be. But they're not gonna, not gonna see me bleed. Cause baby, I got you, 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 you. I've been beaten to the ground, dragged across the dirt. I've been scared to live cause some people never learn But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn Cause baby I got you, 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 you It's a new beginning So this video is being released on uh, June 28th, 2023 Which is the 54th anniversary of the beginning of the Stonewall Riots Um, Stonewall Riots were an event that happened in New York City in 1969, whereas the people at the Stonewall Inn decided they were tired of the treatment, the police were attacking, were, it was criminalized, they were attacking them, they were arresting people just for being in the bar, period. And it basically boiled over into riots. So the people of the Stonewall Inn and New York City fought back. Um, and rumor has it that Marsha P. Johnson, drag performer at the bar, threw the first brick. And that brick became a riot. Just basically a putting their foot down and saying we're not going to accept this treatment anymore as non-equal citizens. What we wanted to do today is we wanted to talk to you guys about the gay community here in Akihik and what it's really like. We've been here about eight months, so we're going to uh, share our experience. It's coming up oh. on nine. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it's coming up on nine months. Oh, I know. Okay. okay. We've done a lot of videos. We've talked about the amazing gay community, LGBTQ community here in the Ahihik area. And it's, it's truly, it's truly remarkable, really. Um, there is a very large and growing community here in the Ahihik area. The median age is getting lower and lower. So that's, um, you know, that, that's really interesting. Um, we wanted to talk about how the community here, while there is a big LGBTQ community and we do things together, there is a monthly dinner that we get together for. There is a Lucky Bar, which is a bar for everyone, but it is frequented by the LGBTQ community. Yeah, and the community here is very close-knit when it comes to the LGBTQ folks. We support each other. We uh, welcome each other. We are very, you know, engaged in that. However, the community at large is actually very inclusive. And so, so overall, the community here in Ahihik, um is very welcoming of everyone. Uh, it, it's unnervingly so <laughs> when you come yeah. from when you come from a culture that um, where it, it's not that way. Um, you kind of have to backtrack and unlearn some things. I mean, you're just welcome here. Um, we've talked to a lot of people who've lived here for a long time and it's just always been that way. Now, I can we can say that, you know, we can only speak for our experiences here in Ahihik. We also have seen that in various places like Puerto Vallarta, um, Mexico, Mexico City, City um, different places that we have been. So we can't speak for the country at large, but in our experiences and the places we've been, it's been a non-issue. Yeah, there's yeah. there's definitely places where you can go and be a part of a gay, um, predominantly gay environment. So Lucky Bar on most nights, um, it's going to be a very welcoming place for LGBTQ people. Plus, it's very open to uh, other people, um, as well as small groups and such that KJ mentioned earlier. Like we see people here walking hand in hand. We see. Um, you know, couples being welcomed into restaurants, welcome into businesses and establishments, not even a thought, not even a concern. Uh, there's just, it's just a non-issue. Yeah. It's, 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 it, it's, like I said, it's kind of unnerving at first. It takes you back. Yeah. You kind of, I mean, I've gotten so used to my entire life, always like, always knowing what's going on behind my back and looking over my shoulder and, and just getting used to some forms of overt discrimination that, 
I'm sorry, I hate to say this, but if you're not LGBTQIA, you just don't know. You, you, you have an experience. You live in a world where you don't see it. You don't realize it's going on. I mean, my... You might recognize it. You might acknowledge it, but you haven't experienced it. And it's a very different thing. Or you may not even see it. Yeah. I mean, it just, it's going on right in front of you and you don't even realize it. And so, I mean, I, my entire life, I've been in an environment where I am constantly discriminated against. I'm always having to look over my shoulder. I always know what's going on around me. And... The odd thing is, is you kind of loosen up and you realize that it's just, you don't have to do that here. I mean, you're looking over your shoulder to make sure, you know, for regular normal safety concerns, but just like you would anywhere else, yeah. New York City, New Orleans, wherever. But That's less, and that's even less. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's it's very interesting. Yeah, there's there's places here where, um, in, in, in Ahihik, where um, there's gay-owned businesses and gay-owned establishments. They're very welcoming to everyone. everyone. It is the same on both sides that gay people are very welcoming of straight people or straight people being very welcoming of gay people. Um, so it's, a, it's an inclusive environment and it's, it takes you a minute to let go of the expectations. If you are coming here to visit or to live, um, you will have to let go of that expectation and learn a new culture and how that comes into play in that culture. We're still learning, but from our first impressions, it, like he said, it took you back so that you go, wait a minute, you mean there's a whole culture of people here who just absolutely don't care that I'm gay and don't make it a public issue for me? Uh, while they may have their own belief systems and their families and have their conversations among their, among their families, it is a cultural thing here that you don't make someone feel uncomfortable. And so... Yeah, that I, plays well. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I, you know, in the the community here, the LGBTQIA community here is truly amazing. Um, in some of our other videos, we've talked about different things, but I have never seen a community that can pull together at the drop of the hat to get things accomplished. You know, yeah. um, even though the, the community at large is very welcoming and all that's wonderful, you know, you still have you know groups and communities and stuff like that. And the LGBTQIA community here is phenomenal. Um, I mean, you know, we've taught, we've told the story in previous videos about some friends. Uh, one of them um, had a medical issue, had to move back to the U.S., and literally the community pulled together and made this happen. Um, yeah. Then we also have uh, a lot of examples of the LGBTQ community uh, participating in volunteer activities, yeah. uh, really, really engaging in the local community and acclimating to the local community and really trying to help and make a difference in those areas where um, you know they get neglected sometimes. There's examples of orphanages, animal rescue, um, supporting education, helping people uh, achieve education, um, and then also kind of self-monitoring. We're big in the self-monitoring of the uh, expat immigrant community here saying, hey, respect the culture. We're, we because we understand that we have a culture that's unique and we just want to be respected. That's it. And we find that important to make sure we advocate for here. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there, there's also, you know, businesses and stuff supporting each other. You know, mm -hmm. there, um, you know, there's wonderful gay artists here. There's wonderful business owners here. There, you know, hey, there's us, YouTubers. Yeah, YouTubers. You know? <laughs> and we all, you know, and we do. We help support each other and pull yeah. each other in on different kinds of projects and get opinions and, and that sort of stuff. And so not only is there the LGBTQIA community that, you know, humanitarian, uh, in a humanitarian kind of way helping each other, Businesses, you know, we we also are helping each other, you know, from a business perspective. So it's growing, and as the as the age, you know, uh, as the median age of the community starts, you know, going from you know the seventy year old, eighty year old people down to you know the retirees into you know people in their thirties and forties and fifties that are moving here, and it's it's Re really working remotely has changed yeah, everything, and it it changes the dynamic, and all of a sudden you're starting to see this community really expand mm -hmm. in multiple different ways, and that's really exciting. And in many ways, helping the community. Yeah. Um, not coming and taking from it, but participating in it and being um, engaged in the local community and learning.
So something that was really interesting is we uh, we sat down with a friend of ours who is a local premier real estate agent in the area, and we he's been here for 15 years, and we were able to sit down and talk with him about what was the community like whenever he first moved here, and what is it like today, and how has that changed? So we'll share a little bit of that with you. We'll introduce you to Steve Cross. Um, he is quite the fixture here in Ahihik, and knows a lot about the history of the gay community as well as the community at large. Um. I'm Steve Cross. I have lived in Akihik for 15 years, uh, originally from Northern Ireland, UK. <laughs> <laughs> um, I sell real estate here. Um, came here from Puerto Vallarta. Um, got sort of a little bit tired of the weather and the humidity and even though this is touristy here it's sort of got more of a connected feel but uh, I like the community here between the locals between the, the foreigners it's just a more it's a closer feeling than what I thought was in Puerto Vallarta. All of us sell to everybody however in the last seven years the gay market has become very prominent, very, very prominent. It's, uh, um, I would say now the majority, I think I sold 56 homes last year and probably 20, I think 28 maybe, so just literally half were to gay couples or gay singles. And I'm only one person, you know, so there's a lot more coming in than that. Um, I, well, first of all, I think we became a little bit more popular here. I believe it was in February 2008 that the Advocate magazine profiled Akihik as one of the best places for gay people to retire to. Um, that obviously got us a lot of the people coming in. Um, my two friends who are now passed away, they were the focus of that interview to bring people here. Um, there used to be another realtor who has since retired who advertised in that as well and that was probably the beginning of the the influx coming in was from them it started when I came here first of all in 2008 it was very um, sporadic there was there was still a gay presence um, but not nearly what it is at the minute you know and I never thought I'd see maybe in my lifetime even, a, a gay bar or a gay focused bar, um, pride parades and so on. I think one of the big developments has been the, the Lake Chapala Society which now has a gay president, the Lakeside Little Theatre which now has a gay president, so we've um, incorporated a lot of things like Pride Month and Pride Magazine for June and so on. So. Um, it's developed hugely. Uh, uh, maybe about seven or eight years ago, there was a bar called El Infierno, which was sort of the precursor to Lucky Bar. Um, and he, he flew the flag and so on. It was very much a mixed crowd, but nobody cared. And it was a really busy happening bar. Um, and that sort of became like a focus. We had a meeting point eventually. Um, then as more and more people bought, you know, it started to focus on um, people's houses, cocktail parties at homes, dinner parties, meeting somewhere for a cocktail, going to dinner. Uh, and of course now we have the gay dinners that have 60 people going. So and so it's, it's very organized now. So obviously the LGBTQIA community in Akihik has grown um, significantly over the years. Um, what would you, how would you say that the local community um, perceives that or, and what do you think are, are there any safety concerns or anything like that for LGBTQIA people here? Um, I, I think it's one of the attractions of the area is that local people just really don't care at that there's a really, lax attitude to whether you're straight or gay as long as you're a good person uh, they're going to accept you i know that with you know most people here of course have a maid and gardener and so on uh, 
my maiden gardener are they've been with us for 15 years when I was married uh, now widowed um, but they have they just don't care about that you know they don't care if one of their sons is gay we've often talked about it um, about their younger son and they just don't care um, anything like that so I think that's one of the attractions is just the don't care attitude to it and everybody mixes in I think in 15 years here I've never had a you know being called a name or anything like that um, we are starting to see a couple of trans people now, but not a problem at all. You know, with that, you know, hangs out in the village square without any fear of anybody attacking or saying anything to her. Um, along those lines, so there's a, a, a large <laughs> influx of immigrants, expats into the community, um, not just you know from the LGBTQIA community. Um, <clears throat> Do you see or have you heard of any issues with people coming from north of the border and bringing any sort of negative stereotypes or hate with them down here? Not, not personally, no. Um, I mean, we obviously have both sides of the political spectrum that have come from the United States, but no, I've never personally encountered anything like that at all. <clears throat> Um, so you touched earlier on um, there's obviously a good LGBTQIA presence in the community leadership here in Ahikik. Um I know of a couple of, of uh, businesses that are LGBTQIA owned. Um, can you expand on the presence of business owners, community leaders in the area? Well, it, it's pretty common now to see businesses flying the pride flag outside. Um, I can think of four just offhand, uh, including real estate agencies, um, property managements, regular stores that fly the flag year round. Uh, that, so it's not an issue here at all. When you when you moved here from Puerto Vallarta, uh, what was the what was the LGBTQIA community like, and how has that changed over time? Aside from just getting bigger, how, how has it changed and evolved? Um, well, I think when when we moved here originally, there was obviously a lot less um, gay presence here. Um, and anybody that was, was in their 70s. Um, I came here in my early 40s. Fernando was in his late 30s. And they all referred to us as the teenagers everywhere that we went. <laughs> so. Um, the change is that, first of all, there's been a lot more, obviously, moving in, but also the demographic is younger. Uh, people are working remotely, so that's loud, not just in the gay community, but a younger presence to come in. And, you know, for many, they see it as an opportunity if you're making U.S. dollars and living in Mexican pesos. You know, it's uh, probably like a 30% wage increase. Uh, that so that's brought a lot of people in but, and our location is great you know because you can be in Puerto Vallarta you know on a 50 minute flight oh, yeah. you can go to San Miguel you could you know there's so and having the international airport here you know even for me going back home it's two flights you know to get back home that's one of the I think the drawbacks that people complain about San Miguel de Allende mm -hmm. is trying to get there because Leon is the a smaller airport mm -hmm. so it's just a little bit more difficult yeah, the proximity to Guadalajara Airport is amazing. Yeah, it is. Because it sits south mm -hmm. of the city. Mm -hmm. So you're not having to really like go through all the city. You just yes. hire a driver, boom, mm -hmm. you're right there. Yeah. The taxi exactly. cabs run 24 hours a day to bring you back. Yes. That's and you right. can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's you right. can you can even I mean you can even hop a bus here in Ahihik that will take you all the way up to Guadalajara mm -hmm. and then you can just Uber over to the other bus station <clears throat> yes. and get on one of those luxury coaches. And they're and go, really nice. Yeah. And they've got internet. Yeah. That they're a really nice bus system. I've yeah. used them several times. I want to do that. We haven't done that yet, but yeah. I want to do yeah. that. No, they're pretty cool. Yeah. They Absolutely. really are. That'll be really cool. Yeah. And also, we um, definitely have a younger uh, local gay presence that was never seen when I came here first. Do you think that that is because you're seeing um, more of an open attitude with the, within the local community and more yeah. kids are coming out? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know a couple of kids here. Um, there's one that I know from Guadalajara whose parents had a terrible time with him coming out. But um, it really doesn't seem to be the norm here. Uh, going off on one of the tangents, um, 
what people used to say here is the hot springs um, that are just out west here. Apparently, in like the 50s, there was a community that centered around there that built that. And this could be folklore, <laughs> but I've heard it from several long term people here. They said that they, they sort of believed that the springs had healing powers, but they were nearly all foreigners that settled around them. And uh, so the locals were kind of used to having a, a different kind of foreigner here. Uh, my gardeners uh, actually told me that, uh, that he said, no, we were just used. They probably referred to them as weird people, but not in a, a nasty, rude way, just that they had a different lifestyle. So they said, you know, that we've always become accustomed here to different lifestyles that being here. I, I guess to sum it up, what I would say, if you're interested in the area, just come down. Um, you'll be surprised how beautiful, friendly, caring and welcoming it is. And uh, as we were just saying, there is, being gay is just a zero issue here. Nobody cares about it. I would especially encourage you to come down if you're 60 plus and single and looking for somebody like me. <laughs> and I do realize how desperate that was. <laughs> this is, you go to Puerto Vallarta <coughs> to have fun, mm -hmm. you come here when you're serious and ready to settle down yes. with someone. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, well thank you for joining us. So, uh, thank you for being a part of this. But if you contact him, we will have his contact information down in the description. Make sure that you tell him Truly Remarkable Life, Craig and KJ sent you Please do. Him. Please do. Yeah, we want to let him know that all of us are behind him as well. And. Happy Pride to everyone out there, whether you're gay, straight, lesbian, trans, anything that you identify as, we say Happy Pride. Be proud of yourself. And to the rest of our allies and our community that support us, we say thank you. And happy Pride! Happy Pride! <laughs> if somebody is here in person, um, I like to just get them in the car, drive for maybe two hours to different areas, uh, let them see the, the different neighborhoods and so on, then arrange maybe the next day that we go look at five houses um, in whatever budget that they look, again in different areas, so as you're educated as to how far your money goes. So if you haven't already, go find your truly remarkable life. There is only one of you, only one of me There's a million of those who won't let us be But they're not gonna, not gonna say